Hello, everyone. Welcome back to To Be Like Christ. Welcome back to our Psalms Bible study. We are discussing Psalm 116 today, and you can download the PDF on our website. There's a link in the description. Our first page today is a little bit lean. We do not know the author of Psalm 116. It's not listed in the text anywhere. We do have a New Testament reference, and that is in 2 Corinthians. I almost said Chronicles. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 13. Now at the bottom you'll see that we've got a theme section and a definition section. Let's be a little wild and do definitions first today. The, the uh, definition for today is Sheol, which if you've been studying Psalms with us, you're going to know that definition really well at this point. The basic kind of simple explanation of it is this is the place of the dead or the grave. That's Sheol. Now, themes. God is worthy of worship because he supports his people. He's worthy of worship for a lot of other reasons, but that's certainly one of them. And number two, God is trustworthy both in life and in death. Now, I know I said that the next several chapters were very short, like less than 10 verses. Well, I lied because I forgot about <laughs> Psalm 116. We've got 19 verses to cover, but just wait. The other ones will be shorter, I promise. God, <laughs> the theme for today, or the uh, not the theme, but the the heading I have for the 19 verses of this chapter, God, the deliverer of my soul. And so in Psalm 116, the psalmist recalled God's faithfulness to him and how God had saved him when all other people had failed him. He expressed his love for God because God had heard his prayer and responded in his days of trouble. Since God had been with him during his days of trouble and his time of need, the writer promises to be faithful to God all of his days, the rest of his, his life. The writer's situation, we don't know all the details about it, but we do know that it had been grave to the point where he thought his life was being threatened. But God had kept him, quote, in the land of the living, and he was very appreciative of that. And so he highlights several characteristics of God, like God's mercy, his graciousness, and his righteousness. In contrast to God, the psalmist writes that, quote, all men are liars. They can't be depended on, basically, is what he's saying, at least not in the same sense that you can depend on God. The psalmist declares that he is going to praise God for his faithfulness, which is something we've, we've talked about. The psalmist declared that he was going to worship God for his faithfulness, and he wrote this, quote, I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all of his people. He acknowledged that the death of God's saints, the people, the godly people, people who are faithful to God, the death of those people is a precious thing in the eyes of the Lord, which is a really nice sentiment. But he was still thankful <laughs> that God had allowed him to remain alive and kept him in the land of the living a little bit longer. In our final section today, I've, I've got a comprehension section here. I want to follow up on something that we've been considering throughout our psalm study, and that is how much did the psalmist know about life after death? We've looked at some other passages, and, and it's, it's not exactly clear all that they knew and how much fine detail they knew about the resurrection and about eternal life, but this psalm does give us an interesting detail to add to our discussion about these things. So in verse 15, you probably noticed it. The psalmist wrote that God cherished the death of those who were faithful to him. Now, if you think about that, that statement wouldn't really make a whole lot of sense if the psalmist didn't believe that God had something good in store for his saints after they died. If a person just disappeared, you know, into oblivion, into extinction after death and existed in no other form other than just, you know, dust on the earth, it would seem preferable in just about every case to have them remain alive rather than to die so they could spread their godly influence all over the, the world. Yet the author wrote that a righteous man's death is a precious thing in the sight of the Lord. So this seems to indicate that the psalmist knew that physical death wasn't the end of a person's existence, and that God had something good waiting on the other side of death's veil. 